good on the referees. Well, if the interesting part about this is it's very similar to a game we did last year in the 5A championship with Belvedere. They don't huddle up. It's a no-huddle offense. It's very sophisticated. It gives you an idea of kind of the Dallas look. They do a lot of jumping around. But it all comes down to where they are just prior to the snap. When they come out, they'll show you a bunch of shifting around. But from a defensive standpoint, the defense coordinator, coordinator is more concerned with where they end up on that split second before the snap. And that's what we're going to see when they come out with their no huddle offense. They do a lot of different things. Well, Orangeville is set to receive. We'll have uh, Rotoball back number 29, but it comes up short. Trying to be taken by one of the up men. Jamie, uh, check it there, and also number 31. He does get a handle on it. But Dargeville will start going into the teeth of that win on their own 21 yard line. It's really unfortunate he didn't get a better kick to get the ball up into that uh, strong wind that he had on his back. Uh, kicking with the wind didn't help in that case. So here is Orangeville coming out their first offensive play. That is Jim Moyer, the quarterback, 6'3, 177 pounds. The deuce back, throw the ball at Hoyt. In motion goes Schleter. And they give us the first man through Hoyt, and Hoyt gets a nice chunk of yardage. We're taking a look at the starting offense right there. Moyer, Rodebaugh, Schleter is the only sophomore in the whole lineup. Port Reamer and the end is Mike Harnish, the tight end. See a lot of number 58 today, Chad Bauer. They're all state guard and linebacker. Call it second and three from the 28. First man through this time is Matt Rodeball, and Rodeball gets what looks to be first down yardage. Interesting in the first two plays, Mike, they ran behind their big all stater, Chad Bauer. On the first play, they ran a trap behind him with him as a trapping guard. And on this last play, they ran a dive right up behind him. Here's a look at uh, Lexington's defense. First and 10 now from the 34 of Orangeville. Opening moments of the first quarter. Again, again through this is Ford, and Ford again through the middle of the line. With Wine Zero there, uh, Derek Wine Zero, the linebacker coming up to make the stop. Well, they're finding a soft spot in that defense right now, and they're they're just exploiting it. You notice both plays, well, the first three plays here have been between the tackles. And uh, they're running in an even front, which means there's nobody over the center, so they're finding that soft spot and they're running right at it. Dan of Dine, second and one from the 43. And again, it's Hoyt. And again, it's first down yardage close to midfield to the 48 yard line. Before Kevin Therrien comes up to make the stop in the secondary. There's the backs right there. It's just a power off tackle, and that uh, guard just overran the player. You would have had him for a loss in the backfield, but that's just good hard running. They're taking big splits with the offensive line, and they're just blowing Lexington at this point off the ball. And that advantage of the win is going to be lost here in the first quarter with this nice drive by Orangeville. Lexington, the bigger team, but Orangeville handling them at least on the first drive. Went backfield out on the wing is Friedmanski. Lodabaugh tries the right side on the sweep this time. Therian comes up to make the stop again from his uh, safety position. Brings up a second down gain of four. You can see the power sweep here, and they've got that guard pulling. That's big Chad Bauer leading him around the corner, but good penetration there by the uh, cornerback, number 83, Kevin Therian, comes up in that seam and makes the player. He would have had some good yardage. Therian, 5'9", 155-pound junior, an offensive star as well. A lot of two-way players, as you would expect, in 1A. Game of three, second and seven. Schleter in motion to the left. And Moyer again gives to Hort. And this time, the right side of the line comes up from Lexington. 
to stop Hort. Maybe a gain of a yard. Lance Benedict, number 30. And on the stop. Dan Reamer comes in now at split end position for Archville. Early big play right here, a third and five. Again, it's Schleter in motion. And the pitch back to Matt Rodeball. Doesn't get the block, but he makes the first down yardage anyway. Matt Rodeball did that by himself. That was a nice job of running by Matt. The tackle, you'll see the tackle pull right there out in front of him. Let's watch the tackle. You can see he misses the block. He makes an air block, but uh, Rodeball makes a nice cutback and picks up the big first down for Orangeville to keep the drive going. Pat Egan on the stop, and the drive continues. From the Lexington 40, Orangeville has had the ball the entire first quarter. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go. They have kept the ball on the ground, and they have been successful. Leader in the slot. This time he does going in motion to the right. This time, Ford is driven back by Egan. And about four other defenders for Lexington. That was a little inside trap that they ran on the very first play of the ball game, which picked up yardage there. You can see the trap, but uh, number 30, Lance Benedict, is not fooled or not blocked, one of the two, and he comes up to make the play in the big stop there. Lance Lost Benedict it. is only a junior, excuse me, Mike. Loss of one, second down and 11 for Lexington 41, Orangeville on the attack. This time, Matt Rodeball gets up to the 35-yard line. Rodeball stopped by Rob Culbertson. Will bring a third down and five. You'll see a power sweep here that the uh, fullback's blocking back. They're pulling the, the uh, offside tackle and guard. And uh, they didn't do a whole heck of a lot out in front of the ball carry, but he picked up about four or five yards on that play. Aaron Olson comes in now at one of the wide receiver spots. They're running in plays. The wide receivers are Reamer and Olson. He's down the bottom of your picture. You can't see him there, but he is split to the right. Schleter in the slot. Third and five now from the 35. First pass of the game. Moyer looking for Olsen. Broken up in there by Theory at number 83. And it looked for a moment like either man could have caught it, or Theory might have had an interception. But a good play defensively by Kevin Theory. Well, he throws the ball right in the teeth of the win here. And you can see right here that the, actually the receiver does a nice job of pulling the ball out of that secondary man's hands, or he would have had an interception. Well, not much point in trying a field goal, certainly, and not much try, not much point in trying to punt into this win. So fourth and five, Orangeville will go for it. They send Reamer to the right. Schleter in the slot. The deuce backfield. Rodeball and Hort. The pitch goes to Rodeball. And a good play coming up by Billy Dubois to break up that play before it got off the ground and stop Orangeville on downs. Well, that was an excellent play by the defensive back. Let's watch the tackle. Number 73 gets out in front of him and walls off that man, but there's number one, Billy DeBoy, a 5'10", 148-pound junior, comes up from his cornerback position to make the play. Well, Pat Egan really made that play by getting the penetration in there, and we've called Pat Egan's name a lot. We'll call it some more. Now it's a chance for Lexington with five minutes, 50 seconds to go to go on offense. The quarterback, Bill Brown, he's a junior. You see a lot of shifting, as Jack told you. They go into the eye. Thomas, the up back, 1-0, the deep back. In motion goes Jeff Dameron. Right away we get flags and the shifting brought out some laundry. Take a look at that starting offense while we wait for the penalty. Bill Brown, the quarterback, he is a junior. Wine zero, Thomas, Theory, and Jeff Dameron. And the tight end, Lance Benedict. And there's your line. Bachman Brent, you were the center. 
And we get a false start called up against uh, Lexington, so it'll be first and 15 now from their own. Well, call it about the 31. Notice what they're in, and then we'll see what they shift to now. And that's what you're concerned about is where they're at right now. This is Jeff Downland in motion towards you. They give us to the first man through. like a recovery from Orangeville. That was going to be an option play, and the fullback, as we'll see right here, the fullback never gets a handle on the ball. He lost the ball on the initial handoff, and uh, Orangeville picks it off with excellent field position on about the 33-yard line. We'll try to get a reading on who made that fumble recovery, but Orangeville does have the ball on the Lexington 32-yard line. the 30 yard line it will be Matt Rodebaugh Dave Stiles coming up to make the stop Stiles biggest man on the Lexington roster at 510 220 Let's look at Ed Moore of Lexington on the brain trust right there not like the way things are going so far for his team. Who can blame him? Gain of four, second and six for the 28. Moyer to give this is Hoyt, and Hoyt's got lots of room. Nice. Hoyt to the 15. Hoyt near the 10. Before he is stopped. And boy, those 2,000 yard rushers. Brian Friedmanski coming up to make the stop, but boy, Hort is now inside the 15. Notice how he's cutting back away from the grain here, doing a real nice job of cutback running. And of course, he had 10 touchdowns during the year, and we'll see the quickness here that he shows with this cut right there. Defensive backs are overrunning him, and he comes back. He had 1,000 yards during a regular season. First down, 10 to go. They're on the 11, so Orangeville can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Leader goes in motion to the left. This is Hort again inside the 10, down to about the 8. Exact same play that they ran before. Fake to the fullback, draw those linebackers inside, and then give to Hort the second man through. And that play did not gain as well as the one prior to it. Eric Heuer made the stop for Lexington. Pick up of four. All the action has been with the purple folks. And a very important part of this, Mike, is that they have not been forced to punt into that win and give up real good field position. So it's really kind of backfired the, the, the idea of deferring on the coin toss at the beginning of the ball game. They are going into the win now if you just joined us. Second down from the seven. Court again. Court. Touchdown, Orangeville. All James Hort this whole drive here for Orangeville. Some big, big plays, and of course, culminating in that touchdown run. There's a shot right here of Hort. It's power play off tackle, followed behind Rodebau, and he just punches his way with some good high knee stepping there, getting into the end zone. Now we get a nice shot from the end zone camera. You can see there Bauer with a nice trap block. And uh, Rodenbaugh leading him up, and he's in the end zone. Well, the 11th touchdown of the season for James Hort averages a little less than six yards a carry. They're going to go for two here on the extra point. There's a good look at James Hort. Wide open, wide open. Two points for Judd Pulley. On the beautiful deception, misdirection, and pass from Jim Boyer. So they'll come back up the field. 2.56 left to go first quarter. Haven't seen much of the Lexington offense, but Orangeville's out ahead 8-0.
well the quarter has been all Orangeville so far after the turnover four plays a minute 33 on the clock 32 yards culminating by the seven yard run by Hort we'll take a look at it again. Well I guess we won't. All right, we'll take the kickoff first. Brian Friedmanski deep along with uh, Billy Dubois number one. The kick from Hort and it is short into the wind bounces on the 30 again Lexington has trouble picking it up. Lance Benedict coming up with it and falling on it so Lexington will try to go back to work here. And they have had their problems in the first quarter they've only run two plays one was a false start one was a fumble. They haven't looked real good in the second half but here's a team that has and here's a player that has Jim Hort on the touchdown run he's the one that brought him down here with a big run off a, a trap play and he's done exceptionally well in the first quarter. Give to the up back John Thomas and John Thomas from the 28 gets out to about the 35. Here's a pass for the two point conversion. It was just faked in one direction. He came back to the wing back who was wide open. There wasn't within anybody within 25 yards of him in the end zone here. And they pick up their two point conversion, go up eight nothing. Eight yard gain on the first down play. Second and two. Dameron in motion. And the eye wedging him out right away is Bill Brown. And Brown close to the first down, but uh, I don't, don't know if he got it. Close enough for a measurement. I was Scott Sederstrom, Chad Bauer, in to make the stop. And from here, we can't tell. No, right away they'll say it's uh, it's a good half a yard short. And they're ready to go again on the no huddle offense. And they set after some moving around. Once again, it's Dammer. <laughs> This time it's Thomas and Thomas gets first down yardage and more to the 43. Setterstrom on the stop again and Lexington has its first first down of the ball game. Running an outside veer here. They're double teaming the tackle and they're not blocking the uh, defensive end and he just runs a slant right off that double team on the outside the outside veer and picked up real good yardage for him. Again they'll come back we'll take a look at the Orangeville defense but Lexington remember with the no huddle. Runs a lot of plays. They ran 70 last week against Arcola in the semis. And this time nothing happens as Thomas gets driven back by a lot of purple. Judd Pulley leading the charge along with Chad Bauer. There's Chad Bauer number 58 the, the all stater from Orangeville and you can see him peeling off the block and coming up to help out on that tackle on Thomas and uh, he. He's been an outstanding player. He's had over 171 assists and solos total wise for the entire season. Outstanding linebacker. No game. Second and ten. Again it's Thomas. And again he stopped. This time maybe a yard. Dave Zimmerman, 6'3, 260 pounds, coming up to make the play for Orangeville. Third down with 15 seconds left to go. This will be Lexington's last play with the wind. It hasn't helped them so much this quarter. Out to throw. Looking deep. And it's complete. Therian. Touchdown, Lexington. Bang, bang. Kevin Therian. What a play. He certainly took advantage of the win there. Just laid it up and Therian ran right under it. And he's only a junior and he's one of the leading receivers for Lexington. During the season, he caught 22 balls for 430 yards and five touchdowns. And the big part of it is his average was 19 yards a catch. Well, 57, 53 yards on that play is going to boost his average even more. Bill Brown to Kevin Therian, and just like that, the Minutemen strike in a second. And they will go for two. He's got Thomas and Dubois behind him in the eye. Again, Dameron goes in motion. Trying for the tie. Pitch back to Dubois. Billy yeah. Dubois has got it. 
key to that two point conversion was the block of the wide receiver on the cornerback. He stayed with him long enough. So when Du Bois got that pitch, he was able to get into the end zone. Bill Brown running the option beautifully. We'll take a look at the touchdown pass again. And boy, was this a beauty. Well, watch Brown get out of trouble here. He drops back and he's flushed out of the pocket and he throws across his body. But notice how he leads Therian on a post route. And of course, the wind did help that, laid it up there. And Kevin Therian shows good speed and outruns everybody for that big touchdown. And we'll see the way Bill Brown works the option here on the two point conversion. Now we can see the blocker right there. Great job. Notice how long he must sustain that block for Du Bois to get across into the end zone for that two point conversion. Excellent job. The key to that was number 21 making that downfield block, and that was Jeff Dareman. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with the score Lexington 8, Orangeville 8. We'll be back. A lot of fireworks to end the first quarter, and certainly for Orangeville, it was their quarter up until the last play. 8 8 the score. Lexington now to kick off. Matt Wisdom, number two. Go to ball, the deep man in the middle. And Schleter takes it. Frank Schleter gets up across the 30 to about the 33. Orangeville will go back to work. And let's take this touchdown again. Boy, what a pretty. This is a great job by Brown here thrown back across his body anticipating where Therian's going to be. He lays the ball up on the post route and he just outruns those defenders. He was originally doing a, uh, a flag route and then he cut back across the secondary and kind of fooled the uh, defensive backs there and a great job by Brown at getting the ball up in the air and you can see right there that's why they call it to the, call them the Minutemen. Didn't take them long to score. They did it on the last play in the first quarter. So first play of the second quarter this time Orangeville will be working with the wind to its back. Good once again to Hort. James Hort continues to pound. Pat Egan makes the stop. Ball across the 40. Hort certainly has been the workhorse here. See right there there's a trap but uh, Bauer gets shoved right back in, into uh, Hort on that play as he was attempting to trap. You can see already Mr. Hort has had himself a nice afternoon or a nice morning. Eight rushes, 46 yards, and a touchdown. From the 41, it's second and two. This time it's Rodeball. And Rodeball stops short of the first down. He's got a lot of company with him. Egan again, number 61. Eric Hewer, number 71. Clock at 10:25. Third down, three to go. Marshall has been moving the ball very well against Lexington. Taking big splits. They've been changing up their uh, play calling system. They've been running traps. They've been running outside. But they've been running extremely well inside the tackles. Third down, it's a long two. And motion Schleter again. Second man through, it's Hoyt, and Hoyt gets the first down yardage. Close to the 50 yard line, brought down by Kevin Therian. So again, it'll be a first down for Orangeville. Notice the fake to the dive back, and they give to the second man through, which is Hoyt. And uh, with that first initial fake to the lead back, You'll draw the linebackers in, and then there goes Hort, and he's done really been the workhorse in this uh, first half with some great second effort. Ball just short of the 49 now, first and 10, 941 to play first half. 8-8 eight, eight tie. And Rotoball, boy, he is greeted right there by Friedmansky. Brian Friedmansky came up to make the fine play for the loss in the backfield. Loss of about six yards. You can see the fake right here, and there, and he just outruns Bauer, who was attempting to trap, and comes up with the big play and forces uh, Orangeville into uh, actually a passing down here now with this long yardage. Now loss of five takes the ball back to the 43, second and 15. And Moyer's had excellent stats uh, so far in this season. He's completed 62 passes out of 120 attempts for over a thousand yards and 12 touchdowns. 
And Aaron Olson split to the left. Boyer play action. And very close to an interception. But the ball almost looked like as though it had been tipped. It was. I think uh, on that pass rush, somebody just grabbed his arm as he was about to throw. Uh, John Thomas had the ball fall in front of him. We'll take a look we'll, at it here. We'll see right here. Watch the backside, number 61. Just turns him around right there, and that's obviously the reason for the incomplete pass. And once again, it's Mr. Egan. Third and eight. Dan Weaver now splits to the left. Up top, Mike Hines to the right. Third and 15. Again, it's Moyer. This time the screen to Rotoboy. He's got some blocking. Oh, loose ball. Lexington says they have it, and they do. It's a well-designed play. Looks like uh, John Durflinger coming up with the ball number 62. Well, he wouldn't have had enough for the first down. But you can see him cutting back right here. The ball is kind of away from his body. He's stumbling. That's where he loses it right there. Ball goes forward, and it's kicked back. And there's a mad scramble here. Give it to Aaron Stover. Give the recovery to Aaron Stover. So once again, Lexington has the ball after an Orangeville turnover. The keeper by Brown. Brown across the 50 to the 48-yard line. Brought down by Chad Bauer. There's the fake and then the screen back over here. You can see a nice cutback right here, and the ball just, just comes loose. And there's... Over making the play. Only the third fumble all season for Orangeville. Yeah, only the third fumble that Orangeville has lost. Let's see what happens to them. Brown still has it on the option. Oh, Mike, did you see if he had pitched the ball, there was a Man mix was up gone. there on the defense because both people came in on the quarterback and there was nobody at all on the pitch man. If he had gotten that ball off, it was six points. Now, Jamie Kleckler coming up to make the stop on Brown. There you see his numbers as a rusher. He's also better than a 50% passer. It is a first down from the 41. Thomas and New Boys in the eye. There's Matthew Lewis Thomas, and he is through. Thomas gets away. Bauer finally meets him, but again, first down yardage. Boy, those two fullbacks on either side, they are really banging through the line. First down inside the 30. And it almost looked like Thomas here on this run, if he had tried to break it outside, he just wants to lower his, his shoulder and his head and take on the, uh, the tackler. He could have bounced outside and picked up some extra yardage, but it looked like he wanted to punish the tackler. Let's watch right at the tail end, not right here, but coming up right there. He, if he had dipped outside, he had an awful lot of running room, but he just wanted to lower that shoulder and take on the tackler. Well, they're doing it 10, 11 yards at a time. It brings up another first down, this time on the 27. Lexington to put the ball in play. And remember, they'll start out and then they'll shift. Cameron in motion. Brown still has it. The pitch to Dubois. And Billy Dubois inside the 20. What are you pulling? The boys to the 19. It's a nice, nice job of blocking downfield by number 21, Jeff Dameron. The boys gets the pitch. You can see the job right there that 21 is doing. That's an excellent job of downfield blocking. Billy Dubois, one of three fine running backs for this team, running out of the tailback slot, averaging close to five yards a carry. And he's not even the starting running back. And he has over 500 yards. They have three runners with over 500 yards. And of course, the boy also plays an excellent job of defensive back. Second down and one. And again, we get a whistle. And Lexington didn't like the setup. And Ed Moore calls a timeout. It's interesting. Moore will tell you that his guys can set up any way they want. Then they'll shift it to the actual formation. They'll just come out there sometimes. He doesn't know where they're going to be. But after the shifting, they will set and then run the play. That time, though, uh, 
took a timeout to really get regrouped. The broadcast rights to today's Class 1A state football championship have been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this event without the written consent of Sports Channel and the IHSA is prohibited. I'm Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney. Our producer director Bob Albrecht, and nice warm in the truck. And we hope you're enjoying the first of six Illinois High School Association Championships. We're going to bring you today, tonight, and tomorrow. Some great matchups on, on uh, today and tomorrow with all these teams down to the final 12. And of course, it's, it's kind of a two season situation. You play your first nine games. And then the playoffs start on the this year, for example, on the first of uh, November, and the winners to get here had to play another four games. So you end up playing 14 games if you get to the state championship, and that's a nice season for a high school team. In the eye, Thomas the up back, two boys. The eye back, Cameron in motion, and Thomas doesn't look like he made it from here. Again, we'll check the spot, but. Looked as though the middle of the line led by Dave Zimmerman and Mike Harnish colliding to stop. You can see more with the signals. Bruce Welty, the uh, defensive coordinator, will handle all the defense for them. And the quarterback can check off, so that's a lot of responsibility for a junior. Third and one. The pitch to Du Bois. Dameron gave him the block he needed, holding the man so that Dubois can go for the first down inside the 15-yard line. The key to that play, of course, there's two elements to it. It's the quarterback doing a good read here, which he is on the ride here. And notice he gets the ball to him. And then the next part of it is uh, Dameron downfield blocking on that corner. He's taking, blocking the man that has the responsibility for the pitch and allowed Dubois to pick up the first down. First and 10 balls on the 13. Lexington driving. Officials time here. Yeah. But from a coaching standpoint, uh, Mike, for Orangeville, uh, a lot of people say, well, that could be very confusing. No huddle and they're jumping all around. But see, the main concern is they will come out once they, they get into that motion, they either go into a, a pro set because that man in motion goes to the tight end side and it's just nothing more than a pro look or a slot. So from a defensive standpoint, that's just a lot of uh, there they go again. 5.59 on the clock, 8-8 eight, eight tie. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. Lexington on the march. Du Bois this time goes inside. Ooh. Billy Du Bois, excellent second effort, gets inside the 10. He had nothing there, and he just spun off and picked up a couple extra yards. That was a nice effort. You can see Bauer right there, the linebacker. Thomas on him. Lexington comes back again. Remember, they do not huddle. Second and five after the pickup of five. Brown's got it. The pitch to Du Bois again. He's got the hole up and over, down to the one. Well, the sweep right has worked well, and Du Bois almost gets in. He's down at about the one. Again, we'll watch the fake right here to the fullback and the option. Quarterback comes down, pitches the ball again. Dameron doing a nice job of blocking the man responsible for the pitch, man. And they're on the one yard line. Sedister making the tackle, so it'll be first and goal from the one. Power formation right here. Now they're in the eye. Dameron in motion. Du Bois, touchdown, minute man. Billy Du Bois. Did the big work on this drive. Goes in from one yard out with five minutes left to go in the first half to give the Minutemen their first lead of this ball game. There's the official flag person. <laughs> hey, any excuse to run around is probably welcome down there as far as the cheerleaders are concerned. Here's Matt Wisdom, number two, to try the point after. Wisdom injured an ankle in the semifinal. Didn't know if he'd be able to kick today, but he's doing it. Kicking into a strong win, but he's he's 43 for 49 on extra points. Well, let's make it 44 for 50. He was just recently named to the All-State team as the kicker. 
Well, they'll come back up the field. We'll take a short break with the score. Lexington 15, Orangeville 8. There it is, Lexington after Orangeville scored the first touchdown. Lexington has come back with two. The last one, a one-yard run from Billy Dubois to put the minute man out ahead 15 to 8. There's Matt Wisdom. He will kick Matt Rodeball in the middle. Reamer to the bottom of your picture. And Schleter, number 20, at the top. Well, let's put the ball back on the tee. While they're doing that, let's take a look at this touchdown run again. And now this is the man who scored it, Billy Du Bois. Number one, Billy Du Bois in the tailback position on the touchdown. It's just a little toss. And uh, we've got a problem. We'll, we can come back to this. You can see Du Bois telling everybody how he did it on the sidelines. Now nah, he's probably thanking his teammates for making all those stand up blocks. There's Billy. Here is Wisdom to kick it off. This is Schleter at the 27. And Schleter gets across the 35-yard line. 4.54 to go, and the wind has really picked up right here. Stopped by Lance Benedict, and now we'll take a look at that touchdown. You got an angle here that the uh, linesman sees. You can see the pitch right there to the boy, and he cuts back all the way back against the green. When he got that pitch, he was beyond the tackle. You can see he's beyond the tackle, and there's a cutback right there. Nice effort. He finds the seam to get into the end zone and does his little celebration. Well, now Orangeville trailing for the first time in this game with four minutes 39 to go. They'll start with decent field position again, working with the wind from their own 37. And James Court to the 40. Brought down by Benedict. Here's a good look at Lance. There's Hort, good shot being led by Rodenbau. Picks up a nice gain, about three or four yards. Second down, call it a long six. Clock under four minutes. Class 1A championships. These are two teams that made the semifinals last year. Neither made the finals. This year, both teams did. Second down play. East backfield. Motion Schleter. And this is Hort again. Hort breaking tackles across midfield. Boy, he is running strong. Rob Culbertson, number 75, on the stop, along with Derek Weinzero. Culbertson, 5'9", 198. Well, you can see on that play, they fake to the fullback, a dive back, and then they give the second back through. It's a belly play, and it's been the most effective play against Lexington in this first half. They've gotten big yardage out of it with uh, Jimmy Hort running a ball, number 34, 177 pound senior. Ball in Lexington territory on the 49. Clock running at 325, first and 10. Look at him go. Saving tackle by Brian Friedmanski. We were a little, little gimpy there coming up. Now yeah, Hort is coming off. Just a power play off tackle right here. You can see the nice cutback. You can see right there where it looks like he twisted his ankle a little bit. And he comes off the field. Mike Wenger, a six foot, 191 pound sophomore, comes in. Bring up a second down, about one. Clock running now at two minutes, 40. Orangeville with the ball, trailing 15 to eight. The Broncos opened up the scoring. Lexington's come back with two straight touchdowns. And hold up, whistle here. Let's see what this is all about. This will be a big play against them. Delay of game. That really hurts when they had one yard to go for first down. Now they got six. Second and one turns into second and six. They've only got, what, 25 seconds to run it. And they also have their best ball carrier right there on the sideline, taping that ankle up. Now Moyer's thrown the ball well all season, as we mentioned before. They haven't thrown uh, at all. Uh, one pass in the first half here. 
And with time winding down, we might see him go up top here. Second down, six yards to go. And it's Schleter in motion. Moyer. Oh, there's a good be set. It's Friedmanski. Ryan Friedmanski in the foot race now. And Moyer brings him down. But it's going to be first and 10, Lexington inside the 25. Oh, Brian Friedmanski, he knew that play was coming. He had a great angle on it, just cut right underneath the receiver. And if he had a little more speed, it would have been six right down the sideline. See the fake here. He turns, he's looking the whole time. Great angle there by the camera, and also a great angle by Friedmanski to cut underneath that receiver. And this is a really a good job by Moyer saving that tackle, that touchdown saving tackle right there. 38 yard interception return, first and 10, Lexington. Inside the 25 of Orangeville. The pitch back, Dubois, Dubois. Billy's got Brown chasing him, and Billy Dubois gets the first down inside the 10 yard line. Jim, uh, Mike Winger coming up to make the stop. Boy, how quickly this can turn around. Let's take a look at it. There's the pitch of Dubois. He had to wait a little bit on the ball, but you can see right there, Dameron downfield. The coaches that are watching this game will really appreciate the effort of the blocking downfield by those receivers because that is what's really making these plays happen. Is the wide receivers are taking on those uh, people that have the pitch man and they're locking on them and they're doing a heck of a job blocking. Check it. They haven't moved the chains yet. Let's see what the story is here. It looks like we have a flag down. Could be a late hit. Would be half the distance. Talking to Orange, but let's see what happens. Let's do this, the referee. Box at 156. Uh, looks like it's a personal foul. We have a dead ball. Personal foul, late hit, defense. Well, you called the check. Let's see if we can pick it up here. See right here, he's stumbling, his knee is down, he's down. Here comes Boyer, 58, Bauer, there it is right there. And uh, Chad Bauer, a little too anxious to get it on the play. All state linebacker for Orangeville. First and goal on the three. Du Bois, excellent play by Orangeville, coming up to make the stop. Mike Harnish to break into the backfield and drop Du Bois for a loss. Now that's this is the exact same play that the boy scored on earlier here where he cut back against the grave. But the difference in this one is there was good penetration by the backside defensive line of Orangeville to come up and fill those seams and make the play. Mike Harnish, a senior six footer. Block at a minute 17. The pitch back to Boys going left. And Billy Dubois got another touchdown. And there's the guy that made the block again, number 21. Jeff Dameron locking on that cornerback and just staying after him, staying after him so the boy can turn that corner. And of course, with him locking out of that guy, he can't come up to take the pitch, man. Let's see if we can see it right in here. You'll see right there. Number 83 is responsible for the pitch, but Dameron's got him tied up so much that he can't come up and make the play. And of course, the boy just gets inside the corner of the end zone. One minute, 11 seconds left to go in the first half. Matt Wisdom's coming on to try to make this a 22 to 8 ball game. Wisdom's kick is low, but gets over the crossbar. So Lexington now has scored 22 straight points and will kick off with one minute, 11 seconds left to go. And the Minutemen are scoring by the second, Jack. They really are. They, they, they that first quarter, they. They came out and they didn't look very good. They they looked out of sync, but they certainly in the second quarter have come back. They've done extremely well. Couldn't have been a long road trip with them. Right there is the option to fake to the fullback, the pitch. The boy gets the ball, and of course out in front of him is Jeff Dameron, number 21, making the block on the cornerback, and the boy finds the corner of the end zone right there and gets in for the touchdown. Three plays, 22 yards, 56 seconds on the drive. And they're looking at your deep men again. Rodebaugh, Reamer, and Schleter. Now Schleter's in the middle. Rodebaugh is at the top of your picture. And Wisdom fires it. It's going to go toward Rodebaugh's side, but it's short kick taken by one of the up men. And it's Aaron Olson, number 31. Dameron makes the stop. 
And Orangeville will have one more shot at it in the first half. Here's the touchdown again. Fake to the fullback, a real quick pitch to the tailback. And of course, there's the great job by the wide receiver blocking on the corner. And there's the boy just getting right into the corner of that end zone. Well, with only 58 seconds and counting, Orangeville now has very little time to work here in the first half. It will be uh, without go without saying that they'd like a little morale boost to get into the locker room. Here is Hort. And Hort gets about five, brought down by Eric Hewer. But with 39 seconds to go, that kind of a play is not going to get him a quick six. Well, it's good to see that Hort's back in the ball game here. Yards and 15 carries for James Hort. The ankle must be okay. Here's Moyer looking for Reamer, overshoots him, and it'll stop the clock. Friedmanski on the cover. Moyer's got good stats as far as throwing the football. As we mentioned, he's got 12, 12 touchdown passes, and of course, had seven interceptions. When you throw it 120 times, that's not too bad. 62 completions. That's a pretty good ratio. 21 seconds left to go in the first half. Third and six. Let's see what Brian Benning calls here for the Broncos of Orange. Boyer looking for Rotoball. Flushed out of the pocket. He's got a first down. Goes out of bounds with 12 seconds to go. Just this side of midfield at the 49. Run out of bounds by Billy Dubois. Good job of coverage. There's Moyer's uh, running stats for the season. Five touchdowns, so with 85 yards, you can tell most of those were very short quarterback sneaks for those five scores. He wants to throw the ball deep, but he's flushed out of the pocket right here. Good coverage there by... Uh, Lexington, so he's forced to scramble, and he's smart enough to pick up the first down and get out of bounds. 12 seconds to go, first and 10 from the 49. Got time for maybe two plays. Moyer's got room to run, but he's looking all the way down, complete. Looks like to Reaver, no, broken up at the last minute. What's the call? And one of them's marking the ball. It's a completion with three seconds left on the clock. Uh, Harnish, the uh, receiver. Mike Harnish made the catch. Yeah, sure was a good catch. Aaron Stover on the cover. Let's take a look. He really is open here. You can see the, the defensive back just turned the wrong direction. There's a good effort and a good fight for that football, but he comes down with it. Now they've got one play here, to, and I'm sure they'll be going for six. 32 yard pass play right there. Good throw by Moyer. And Mike Harnish making the catch. Harnish has five touchdowns this season. That one takes them to the 13 yard line of Lexington, but with only three seconds to go. You've got one play. Now remember play. the play that they ran for the extra point, Mike. They went into a one back with a double wing. They faked the pitch in one direction, and he just whirled and threw back, and he was wide open. I wouldn't be surprised if they do come out in the one back here. Either in a double slot look more than the wing. The wing is really a tight formation, keeps everybody in, and the slot might spread them out. Yes, and uh, on the sideline, sorry, Jack. And they'll come back, I think, with that formation because they do only have one play here, and I think they're going to have to put it up. Of course, okay. Moyer, Moyer, does, Moyer does have the win. They also have a field goal kicker. But, uh, you know, when you're down by this much, Really want to get six on the board. All right, here we go. Three seconds to go. The ball's on the 13-yard line. I think it's a flood to get down here. Looking for Weaver, number 83. A little inside pitch. And brought down by Pat Egan. Is Brent Schleter to close off the first half. And Lexington holds off Orangeville. 
Well, both teams will take a break right here. So will we. That's halftime at the Class 1A Championship with the score Lexington 22 and Orangeville 8. Now at River Oaks Toyota. Nice. So we understand he re-injured that earlier in the first half, but he's out there. Heck, it's his last game, and he doesn't want to miss this. Well, he's been a four-year kicker for Lexington, and of course we talked to Coach Moore before the game, and uh, just yesterday, Wisdom uh, was selected to the All-State team as the kicker. He has excellent stats, but again, uh, Having that bum ankle, but he's performed quite well so far. Rodeball, Reamer, and Schleter, the deep man, and this goes to Matt Rodeball. Goes into his end zone. He's got to run it. No, they say momentum carried him into the end zone, and that's a lucky break for Orangeville right there because uh, there was a lot of Lexington folks ready to pin him down on either side of the goal line. Of course, in high school football, they're not allowed to run the ball out of the end zone, so the ball automatically comes out to the 20-yard line, and in this case, very fortunate for uh, Orangeville. That's an interesting call because he might have actually, when he bobbled it, stepped back in, but luckily for Orangeville, the officials didn't see it that way. Okay, Orangeville on the attack from their own 20, trailing 22 to 8. Again, a very stiff wind in front of them. This is Matt Rodeball. Rodeball. Trying to go right side. He gets about three yards. Brought down by Lance Benedict. Benedict playing a fine game over at that left defensive end spot. Rodebaugh through the season has been their big threat. He's the leading scorer with 22 touchdowns. And he has 1,600, almost 1,700 yards rushing. And, uh, of course, at 5'6", 155 pounds, he's really their big breakaway threat. But the... Uh, James Hort has been the big workhorse in the first half so far. Second down, seven. Ball to 23. Schleter goes in motion to the left. This is Hort. And Hort, bad ankle and all, gets first down yardage, comes out to the 32. He's brought down by John Brent and Dave Stiles. Get a good shot of that 4-4 defense and number 71, Eric Hewer. And of course, there's Hort, and that play's been very successful throughout the first half for Orangeville at belly play. He's had a great day. What a day to have 100, over 100 yards in the state championship game. First and 10. Ball's on the 33. And coming out, it's Rodeball stopped by Benedict again. I think. Benedict has made Rotoball his own personal uh, property right here. Here's the handoff right now to first back through. The, the two plays prior to that, they faked to him and gave it to the second back in the belly, and there they uh, gave it to the lead back. And, of course, Benedict is in on that play, and he's only a junior, and he'll be coming back next year for Coach Moore. Uh, call it a loss of one, so second down and 11. Rash, Horton, Rodeball. This is Rodeball on the sweep. Rodeball short of the 40-yard line. He's brought down by Billy Dubois. This is a quick pitch. He gets the tackle out in front of him right there, number 73. That's big Dean Briggs, 6'1", 207-pound senior. And he does come up short of the first down. Dean's twin brother, Brian, plays the other tackle spot. So you got Briggs and Briggs on either side. Both over 200 pounds. Dean's a little taller at 6 1. All right, third and three. Another key down for the Broncos of Orangeville. Working into the win. And Hort trying to get to that marker. Looks to be a little short. And once again, it's Eric Hewer making the stop. Let's look at number 30 right here at the bottom of your screen. You can see it's a double team, number 61, Scott Sederstrom, double teaming on Benedict, and they pancake him right on his back. He, that was a, a double team with number 61 in the center, Brandon Rote, number 51. They did a nice job, and of course, they picked up the first down. Not by much, but all you need is the nose of the ball, and that's about what Orangeville had. So, First and 10, very important play for Orangeville on this first drive of the second half. Nine minutes, 16 seconds to go, trailing 22 to 8 after scoring the first points of the game. 
Well, this could be a big morale booster if they could drive down the field and score here, get them right back in the ball game early. Very little gain right there, the right side of the line coming up, led by Culbertson. Trying to draw those linebackers inside with that belly action where they fake the first back in, and that would draw the linebackers in, and then they give it to the second back. But that also allows the offensive line to get better angles on those people as they're drawn into that dive back. They get better angles and be able to cut off those linebackers. Your back, Sport to the right, Rotoball to the left, Schleter in motion. And the inside oh, pitch. He's got room. It goes to Rotoball. It gets the block he needs. Matt Rotoball has got the boys to meet. He beats him. Touchdown, Orangeville. Little shuffle pass off the bootleg action. Big, big play. That uh, Rotoball was their, was their game breaker, having scored 22 touchdowns coming into this game. And it's interesting, they call that a reception, even though it was a behind the line of scrimmage. Now the ball is thrown forward. It was thrown forward. Dallas shuttle play, and of course the Bears used to use it on third down a lot with Dennis Gentry usually. And there, Matt Rotoball going about 57 yards on that one. And right away, Orangeville's right back in this game. There's their double double wing formation. Trying for two points here. Now they got him again open Boyer. again. Wide Once open. again, Harness. Same play, but in the opposite direction. If you ain't broke, don't fix it. Mike Harnish again. And just like that, it's a 22 to 16 game. A lightning bolt from the Broncos. Well, we'll get ready for the kickoff. Eight minutes, seven seconds left to go. The Class 1A game is a tussle again. Here's the touchdown. Watch the action here. It's a bootleg and then a shuffle pass to the wingback coming underneath. And a good block down state downfield here by their all-stater, Bauer. And there goes Rodenbaugh. Now, Du Bois makes a, a lunge at him here, but uh, he can't make the play. And Matt Rodenbaugh. Scores his 23rd touchdown of the season. A block on Stover sprung him, and then he beat Du Bois for the touchdown. The Orangeville kickoff taken by the upman Thomas, and Thomas, good field position here across the 35. Let's take a look at the conversion. Two points again. Watch the fake, the pitch right here, and he comes back the other way and turns and looks back. And as it was in the first quarter with this play when they went for two points after the touchdown, it was wide open again. In the first quarter, they went to the left. This time, they came back with the same play to the right. The fake there to draw the defensive secondary over, and the tight end and the wing back switch here, and he's wide open for the two-point conversion. All right, here's Lexington from their own 37-yard line. When did their back? To throw is Brown, looking deep. And it's complete. Great catch. What an incredible catch by Dameron. Jeff Dameron taking the ball just outside the 30-yard line. Great catch by Dameron. The 5'8 senior. We'll see the option fake here to the fullback, and he just beats the corner. And that was just a great, great catch. Great concentration. 37-yard reception. And boom, just like that, Lexington is knocking on the door from the 30-yard line of Orangeville. Dameron comes in motion here to the near side. Stacked up immediately, though, is Thomas. It looked like Scott Sederstrom not only knew the snap count, but knew, but knew what color shorts well, the backfield was wearing. When they line a fullback up that close to the line of scrimmage the way Lexington does, if those offensive linemen don't get those guys off the ball, he's going nowhere. No gain on the play. Second down, tap from the 31. Actually, Boston got a half a yard. Again, Brown to throw. Looking across for Dameron right into the sun, and Dameron makes another fine catch. Jeff Dameron 
with Hort right on him, making the play. And again, he's looking right up into the sun, and that made that play even tougher. Well, he's just running a, like an arrow route or a bench route, getting right out there. That's an excellent throw, but what's, what's better about that is the great hands catch that he made just extending those hands. A lot of times the kids want to jump up and use their bodies to cradle the football in, but he has enough confidence in himself that he just gets those hands up there and it sticks right in there. That was an excellent catch. Balls at the 22 yard line, game is seven. Third down and about three. Brown got it off. Du Bois, ball's loose. Du Bois covers it. We're going to call, I believe they're going to call the ball dead. An incomplete pass. It was a forward lateral. We'll see right here. It's a counter counter option, and nobody blocks the back side. You can see he was being driven back as he pitched Ooh, the ball forward. Awfully close. Real close. Now the officials call it a forward pass. It's an incompletion. We'll take a look at it again. You can't tell from this angle, but the officials rule it a forward pass. Good thing it wasn't the NFL, but Mr. Brown would have been definitely in the grass. <laughs> Or we'd be up here waiting for the replay. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of thing they really can't tell all that well with Bears Green Bay games accepted. There's Brown's uh, stats. Not too bad for uh, three completions, but there are two big, big plays in there with that one big touchdown in the first, in the second quarter. Jack Lexington's called the timeout here. Fourth down. About three yards to go. A short three, long two. With the win, 5.49 to go. You're leading 22 to 16. Your field goal kicker's hurt. It'd be quite a boot anyway, although with the win, he could probably do it. Looks like they're going to go for six. Well, I think that... Or for the uh, first down, I should say. If he was healthy, they'd probably be kicking it because with, with this win, it's almost blowing us off the top of the roof here. Uh, he was well in his range. Remember, he's an all-state kicker. He's got... He's got excellent stats, but uh, he's injured, as we mentioned several times in the broadcast. So he's going to be going for the first down here, and he wants to, he's going for the throat. He wants to get Orangeville out of this game. Hey, Hoops fans, Monday night's the first regular season game for the DePaul Blue Demons, and you'll catch all the action live on Sports Channel. Bill Bradshaw and I will bring it to you beginning at 7.30. DePaul takes on Hartford from the Rosemont Horizon. Oh, DePaul almost pulled off an upset in the NIT, coming within a whisker of it. Here's fourth down and two from the 23-yard line. Two setbacks, Du Bois and Thomas. Dameron goes in motion to the right. Brown, the pitch to Du Bois. It's worked all day, and it it's works now. Du Bois to the 14-yard line. Brought down. Nice call there, running the option, giving yourself some uh, alternatives here. See the just the sprint out option right there, and he gets out the ball at the boy. Again, you can see number 21 doing a great job on the cornerback, and the boy picks up that big first down, and Lexington's driving again. Pulley and uh, Rodeball came in to stop him, so it's first down, 10 to go. Ball's on the 14. Theory it's split to the left. Dameron in motion to the right. Brown to throw, looking for Therian. And Therian just hedged a little bit there, took his eye off the ball because the safety was coming in for a big time collision there. Well, Matt Hazard, number 10, there's Matt, second string quarterback. But he's the, uh, let's watch Hazard right here from the safety position coming right in. And I think that the eye was just taken off of that football just for a split second. Looking at Hazard, that was just enough to lose it. Catch the ball for Kevin Fury, so it's now second down. This time they go straight ahead. And Brown gets a couple of yards. Well, maybe give him five, and we have a player down. Looks like Chad Bauer for uh, Orangeville. Let's double check it. Yeah. Looks like an ankle. Chad's brother Greg's up here with us, helping us spot. Along with Ben Kale for Lexington. It'll be a big loss for Orangeville because he not only is an outstanding linebacker and holds that defense together, but he's a very important integral part of that offensive line. And uh, he does most of the trapping on their offense. Leading tackler defensively, and there's Chad. 
<laughs> You're not going to take me out. No way. But he will have to go out for one play. No. It's nice to see he's walking under his own steam. So he'll head off. And maybe the same person who put Fort back together will do a little job on Chad Bauer. Chad will be back soon. Meanwhile, third and five. Ball inside the 10. the option not going anywhere this time good play well the difference on that play was they came up and took the pitch man away and he didn't have anything that couldn't go anywhere with the football Dan Reamer Mike Harnish making the play the fake here to Dubois now we'll see right up in the, in the screen there coming up on the perimeter somebody came up on the pitch man so he could not give him the football a wise choice here by Brown to hang on to it well now wisdom will Try the field goal from about the 14, so it'll be a 24 yarder with the wind at his back, blowing from uh, his right to his left. And he's really a chip shot from that. It is. He's kicked uh, four out of five attempts as field goals, but the big thing is he's completed 44 out of 50 extra points. This one's dropped, though. Looked like Harnish came in. Looked like Mike Harnish came in and really smacked it right back in Matt Wisdom's face. Mike Harnish, number 82, with a super play. Along with Dave Zimmerman, I believe, though, it was Harnish who got a hand on it. We'll be able to tell from the replay. Boy, that's a real big lift for Orangeville. Right from the middle, right? Right oh, there, yeah. coming from the outside. Great hustle right there. And that really fired up the Lexington crowd. I think we have everybody from Lexington here in front of us. Place is packed with Lexington fans, only 17 miles from Bloomington Normal. But I tell you, the Orangeville people, they've made a long journey down. They're right in front of us and they're screaming. They love it. Ball comes out to the 20. Orangeville now trying to get something going. Lexington says not so fast, and James Hort gets, uh, oh, a couple of yards. Before he stopped up in there by John Thomas. See the clock coming up to the four minute mark. Orangeville has scored the only points of the second half and now come within 22 to 16. Lexington's field goal attempt blocked. Well, how often do you say that? This looks like an easy one and whammo right back in your face. I'm sure the coaches were, were trying to tell that to the kids at halftime, but it wasn't over. A little motion to give. Ball's on the ground. Again, the ball is loose, and it looks like Lexington has fallen on it. Are they in bounds, though? Lexington says that they have it. Brian Friedmanski, I believe, number 20. Brian on the spot, who intercepted the uh, pass earlier in the first half. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. He did a penalty. Got a personal foul against uh, Orangeville, too. Wow, is this game like the tide, huh? Well, Lexington certainly is getting excellent field position here. Now, Orangeville making all sorts of great efforts, blocking that field goal and then Fans tossing out the ball in the first tickets. play. There's Brian Friedmanski. He has had a game and a half on defense. The fumble recovery, the, the uh, interception. Only a 16-year-old junior. He'll be back. And the personal foul means half the distance. And Lexington has got it on the Orangeville doorstep now with 3.36 to go. We had a change of possession, a dead ball foul on the defense. First down. Boy, this official is uh, right out of the NFL. He does a great job, doesn't he? Telling the Mike fans Stevers, exactly what's yeah. happening. Mike Stevers is calling it. Right now, clock starts to run. Three and a half minutes to go. Lexington, a little more than 10 yards from another score. Brown the pitch to Du Bois. What a move. Shake and bake move inside the five. Billy Du Bois brought down by Matt Hazard, the safety number 10. And Judd Pulley, the linebacker. Let's see that uh, penalty again. Here's Szymanski. Great camera work here. We see the possession right there. There's your late hit. 
coming in after he had gained possession and he was down. That's how they picked up that half the distance. Back right now, second down. Two yards to go. They need to go to the one for the first down. Brown real quick, straight up to give to Thomas, and Thomas to the one. We'll see Chad Bowers back. There's Chad Bowers, an all-state linebacker. Let's see him slide in there. They're trying to wall him off, but he does get into the, into the play. Now we're going to get a timeout for a measurement. Clock shows 2.28 left to go. Go! Go! Stay low! nice to have four downs here for Lexington within a half a yard of the goal line. Now, what does he do here, Mike? Does he go for the first down or does he go for the touchdown? <laughs> There's a question only a coach can answer. But I'll or tell you what, to. I'd love to have this decision. They have about second down and third and, you know, and say, geez, what should I do here? What's our best half yard play? Can yeah. get a touchdown and a first down? Well, I guess we're going to find out. Well, actually, we're not going to have to worry about it. Ed Moore goes for a little bit of the, uh, the water. Lexington now with four cracks at the goal line from inside of a yard. Orangeville backed up. The boys going for touchdown number three. It's interesting, they never run that play in the middle of the field. They run it down here. It's just a real the quick toss in the eye, and he finds that seam to cut back in. That's the only time they've run this play the entire ball game is down here on the one-yard line. Now, it's interesting, too. Billy Dubois usually splits his time with uh, Derek Weinzero at that tailback spot. Weinzero, though, injured his ankle in the semifinal, has been playing, but only on defense. It's given Dubois some more time back there, and he certainly made the most of it. He's an outstanding athlete, very versatile. Scored two touchdowns in the semis, got three today. Here's Wisdom's try for the point. This one goes right through. Well, Orangeville's got only itself to blame right here. They had the good play. They made the, uh, the block of the field goal and then coughed the ball up. And now it's 29-16. You can see right there is the pitch. Du Bois trying to stretch the defense, and then he looks for a lane to cut up in. Gets those shoulders running north and south, and he finds that lane and lowers the shoulders and gets in for the touchdown. His third touchdown of the afternoon. Not bad for a junior. 5'10", 148 pounder. Three plays, 11 yards, a minute 33. And now once again a commanding 29 to 16 lead for Lexington. There's a good close-up of Billy Du Bois, Dubois, whichever pronunciation you prefer. That's Blanche Dubois, Billy Du Bois. But Blanche isn't playing today. Wisdom will kick it off. Once again, Orangeville with Schleter in the middle. This one's taken in front of him by Rodebaugh. Matt Rodebaugh. Across the 20, 25, and drop down. Jeff Dameron brings him down. Well, Orangeville will start again. There we are. There's our uh, little position back here, high atop the press box. Hello, folks. Happy Thanksgiving. Our, uh, <laughs> our right end zone camera picking us up, and there's the scene right here with our technicians trying to anchor their feet to the roof. Good crowd out here. Meanwhile, first down for Orangeville from their own 25-yard line. Boyer, and the gift to Hort, and Hort about a yard. Friedmanski on the stop. into the final minute here in the third quarter. A good look there at Moyer. 6'3", 177-pound senior. Nine yards to go for the first down. 29-16, Arnsville with the ball. They trail. Rodeball trying to sweep again. 
Gets one block. Benedict trips him up. Here, first down yardage. I think what's going to happen here in this next 49 seconds uh, with the clock running, once the ball is is changed directions for Orangeville. I think we're going to start seeing Jim Moyer put the ball up a little more. He certainly has the stats with over a thousand yards passing and 12 touchdowns, 62 completions out of 120 attempts. But I think the coach is waiting for that win and he's going to start putting it up a little bit. Well, they'll need to run one more play, but it'll be a big one because it's a third and one play. There's Brian Benning. Well, when Brian Benning started, there was nothing. Nothing in the program. No weights, no training. He's put it all in and they made the semifinals two years running here. They're in the finals. Final play of the third quarter. Third and one. And Hoard is stopped short. I see I'd call a timeout real fast right here, forcing the punt into the win, but I think we're going to lose it. Because this win is a factor for the punting game. Well, deep in your own end zone. He was uh, deep in your own zone, rather. He was driven back as about a a yard. Let's take a look at this again and watch the Lexington defense right here. Running a little bit of the Michigan State defense with that man angled over the center and uh, they stopped the play and right at that point if they would have got a timeout they would have forced uh, Orangeville to kick into a very strong win and could have got very excellent field position. Well, they're going to need about a yard. For it. They give him a generous spot, and it's less than a yard. It's maybe a foot. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll take a break right here. Be back for the final 12 minutes of action. Stay with us. Another one of those key points in a ball game is upon us. Fourth down, a little more than a foot to go. The team with the ball, Orangeville, trails by two touchdowns and a point. And they are going for it from their own 34-yard line. Straight ahead. Plenty to spare. Boyer on the sneak. First down across the 40. I think we could see that coming all the way. They stayed in their even defense. That linebacker was about three yards off. Let's look right there in that circle. You can see the linebackers three yards off the football, and all they needed was a half a yard, and the quarterback wisely chose to run it right up inside. Brandon wrote the center led the way, and first down now for Orangeville. Just across the 40. Boyer is going deep. Real deep again for Harnish. And Mike Harnish makes the catch inside the 10. Balls at the 5. And what a throw by Moyer. Stopped in there by Stover, who was victimized earlier in the game. Harnish made a fine catch. Had to wait for the ball a little bit. But boy, what a throw that had to have been. Let's see, from his own 30 to the opposition's 15. Well, you can see it's a bootleg pass. It does a nice job to break the contain there. And again, as we mentioned, once he gets the win, he's going to be throwing the ball. Nice hands catch there. And of course, Moyer right here breaks contain right there. Does a nice job and then just throws the ball, putting everything on it, getting up in a win. Nice tight spiral. 53-yard pass play. That, that ball was just about that much in the air. Harness would have been in the end zone had he stumbled. First and goal, and this is Hort. Touchdown, Orangeville. We've got ourselves a ball game, as they say. Love the seven. James Hort takes it over. And just like that, Orangeville has struck both these teams, show instant offense, and it's 29 22. James Hort coming back from that ankle injury in the second quarter, showing the power that got him over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Punches it in for Orangeville. And of course, the threat will be there this entire fourth quarter with Moyer with the win. Again, they'll go for two, and maybe they'll throw it to Harnish again. This time it's a shuttle to Horton. He's got it. 
First time that uh, Orangeville has shown the option, they show it down here on the goal line, going for the two-point conversion. And it, didn't, it wasn't even close. Hort was in all the way. Little pitch to James Hort. He just rolled his way over. 11 minutes, 9 seconds to go. It's a five-point ball game. 29-24, and we'll show you the touchdown again right up the middle from seven yards away. Again, the workhorse right there is Hort. Nice block by Matt Rodenbaugh. And Hort showing good leg drive there, 170 pounds, taking it into the end zone. Here's, Here's the, the first conversion. time they've shown the app. She comes down here and just pitches it out to Hort. Good downfield block, and he gets in the end zone. Five plays, 75 yards, under three minutes, and we'll come back up the field and kick it off. 11.09 to go, five-point ball game. You know, we've really been fortunate, Mike, our third year here to see all of these great uh, games coming down. We've had very good games the entire three years that we've been doing this. Right away into the kickoff. To about the 30. Willie really Dubois taking the kick. Stopped in there by Judd Truman, an offensive lineman. And we might add a defensive lineman. There's the kick getting up into the wind. Doesn't take much of a run up on the ball, and uh, Dubois takes it deep, and he'll just slip here making this cut. And Lexington takes the ball over on the 30 yard line. First and 10 for the minute man. And the give straight ahead to Boys. Gets close to the 35, brought down by Mike Harnish. Boy, Harnish has made those two long receptions. Each time victimizing a Stover, the deep back. And I just can't get over that. I know he had help with the win, but Moyer really showed some kind of arm. Gain of four, it's second and six. Downward motion again. This time coming up short is Thomas, and Thomas is met by Chad Bauer. If there's any question if Orangeville's fired up? Orangeville has really shut down the option from Lexington. They haven't gotten much out of the fullback. They're doubling down all the way down on the uh, and those down people, but the linebackers are just coming in after the up people, the down linemen are blocked and making the play. And, they, and uh, Lexington has not gotten much out of the fullback play today. There's the pitch against the Du Bois. And this time, Du Bois can't make the turn. It'll bring up a third down. Or it'll bring up a fourth down. And this is critical here because the punt has got to come into the wind. Boy, that was a great job here by Bauer. You saw him sliding down, shuffling all the way down, sliding down with the fullback first, and then sliding out on the perimeter. All right. making a nice I'm play. sorry, Jack. Kevin Therian is going to punt. Wisdom usually does. He's got a bad leg. Therian hasn't punted much. Let's see what kind of a rush he gets. Not much, but not a good kick. Ooh, and I'll tell you what, that was awful close to, to hitting that Orangeville player. Yeah. And that's what they're claiming. And it took a uh, Lexington roll. Du Bois and some of the other Lexington players are saying it hit one of the Broncos. I thought it hit him in the foot. Well, maybe we could tell something on the replay, but the call is going to go to Orangeville. Of course, I'm up at 25,000 feet looking down at that, but you can see it's a line drive, and then it hooks. Looked like my seven iron into the wind. Hooks to the left. Ooh, that was close. But the officials have done a great job, and he was standing right there. And like Matt Rose at tight end was uh, the closest player to it for Orangeville. But now the Broncos have the ball just short of midfield after the punt off the foot of Kevin Theory, and that traveled about 20 yards. Most of that was rolled. This is Rodeball. The block around ahead of him is Bauer, and Rodeball makes the turn. Take a look here. You can see the official right there, and he's right, right on the play, and the ball is coming down right there, and it looks like it hits the Lexington player's foot. Good call by the officials, as usual. Matt Rodebach, of course, has that big run earlier. 
13 for 65. And has done some excellent blocking for his backfield mate, Hort. First and 10. This is Hort. Hort smothered by Thomas, crossing the 35-yard line. John Thomas, the leading tackler, coming up to make the stop after a gain of about four. There's a trap block right there, and Hort runs outside the trap block. And uh, kind of a poor job of tackling, but Hort has been running hard all day long, and you kind of feel the momentum here that Orangeville has really got the adrenaline going. And Schleter gave a nice block, too, with a sophomore, Brent Schleter. Second down, six. This is Rotoball. Lexington did an excellent job containing there. Benedict, Egan, Culbertson, all of them in there to make the stop, and it will bring up a third down and a gain of very little, if anything. Well, give him one. This is a quick pitch here to the tackles pulling out in front of him, and they shut him off. They cut off the perimeter, and he cuts back. Does a nice job of getting back, at least to the line of scrimmage there. Then they're in four down territory here. You can see, clock coming up to the seven minute mark. Orangeville trailing by five with the ball. Third down, call it four. Horn, nothing fancy there, but up close to the first down marker. Brought yeah. down by Eric Hewer. And it is a first down for Orangeville. Wow, this is setting up to some kind of finish, Jack. As I mentioned before, we've been lucky, Mike. We've had some great football games and uh, some great finishes, and this is starting to compare with the best of them. Jason, uh, Judd Pulley comes in at one of the receiver spots for the Broncos now. They bring the formation in. First and 10, balls on the 27. Boy. First down yardage inside the 20. Boy, he is really running hard. Kevin Therian making the stop. But Hort is a man on a mission on this run. He really is. That's just a power off tackle. You can see Rodenbaugh doing a nice job downfield. And Hort is not to be denied. I can't get over what kind of blocking Rodenbaugh is doing for, for, for uh, Hort, along with everybody else, of course. But you know, to have two backs like that who are interchangeable. Rotoball, the leading rusher, but today is more Hort's day, and Rotoball's helping him do it. It's a first down. Ball's on the 16. Clock at 6.22. Hort again. And the ball squirted, but out of bounds. Stop over there again by Benedict, along with Hewer. And Du Bois coming in for a See, little extra. Penetration right there. He just beat the tackle, but uh, Hort does a nice job of getting back up to the line of scrimmage. Ball scored is free, but out of bounds. As you can see, no gain on the play. He'll bring up a second down. Hort, the numbers keep on piling up. Do it better than five yards of carry. This time it's Rotoball the other way. All kinds of room. Matt Rotoball close to first down country inside the 10. Rotoball. John Thomas coming up to make the stop. It's just an old wing T play here. The, the uh, buck trap getting outside or the buck sweep. And he just does a nice job of cutting back in here. And getting down in the first down territory. And of course, they're really moving the football with six minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. Clock continues to run. 5.50 now and counting. First and goal from the five. Ramos splits out to the left. You know the two backs, and this is Hort. To the three. Styles making the stop. Dave Styles. Good drive for Orangeville. This will be the tenth play 
Big factor too, of course, is they've been really running that clock down. They've got the wind at their backs. They took over after that short punt. Rodeball trapped back in the line, but he's going to score. Matt Rodeball has put Orangeville in the lead. Five minutes, one second to go. And Rodeball could have been thrown for about a six yard loss. That was really a great effort there. He had two people that made contact with him beyond the line of scrimmage. And he was still able to make that big play and bounce off him and get into the end zone for the go ahead touchdown. Second touchdown of the afternoon now for Rodeball. The clock passing 12, so it is officially afternoon, but. As Brian Benning and the Orangeville Broncos are most concerned with, they have the lead. They're going to go for two, leading by one, 30 to 29. Boyer pitch to Hort, nothing doing. That's the only Big time play, Lexington. It's the only time they start Hort, stop Hort all day long. Lance Benedict made it, and Lance Benedict has been making plays all day. There's a look at Lance. Well, both sides of this stadium are in turmoil right now. Orangeville hasn't had the lead since the end of the first quarter. The cheerleaders doing their push-ups. We'll be back. It's 30-29 Broncos. <laughs> Following the touchdown that put the Broncos ahead. Billy Dubois, the deep man to receive the kickoff. The Orangeville fans in front of us are going crazy. Across the field, the Lexington fans are going crazy. Okay, sure, it's right, but this is what it's all about. Clock at 5.01. Short kick, again, it's Thomas, the up man, on his own 21. And Thomas gets to the 30, he's met by a host of purple. Led by Aaron Olsen. We'll see the touchdown again. Here's it coming right into your screen. You see the tackle pulling right here, but the uh, end in the corner come up and beat him. But you can see right here, Rodenbaugh just bounces off him, does a great job of eluding those two people, and gets into the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. But it's very important for Lexington that they kept Orangeville out of the end zone on the conversion. Again, they run the option, which is the only time they run the option is when they score and they come down, they stop Hort. First and ten for the minute man. Throwing into the wind and overshoots Therian is Bill Brown. Well, well, you know, Lexington got excellent field position out of this. Uh, Orangeville didn't get much of a kickoff with a very, very strong wind behind him. I was sure they were thought they could get the ball down about the 10 or 15 yard line, and uh, Lexington has excellent field position. Well, Therian had a step or two on the defender, Reamer, but the ball overthrown. First time we've seen it, Brown gets it away and right into the hands. He could go all the way here. Touchdown. And he'll do it, too. Judd Pulley. Judd Pulley has shocked this crowd. And the stadium is shaking. You can see the people right there underneath us, all of Orangeville. 41-yard interception return for a touchdown. Judd Pulley, 5'11 junior, may have broken Lexington's back in undefeated season. There was nobody around there. He just tried to step up into the pocket and uh, out of the shotgun, and Brown just he had heavy pressure, but he just threw the ball right to him. What a turnabout here for Orangeville. Well, two touchdowns in 30 seconds. Well, 40 if you're scoring at home with us, but uh, let me tell you, that was a shocker. This Lexington crowd is absolutely jolted. Take a look across the field. And you see it. It is shocking for Lexington. 13 and 0. Let's take a look. Once again at the interception. See, he's in the shotgun. He steps up here under a little pressure. 
and he's looking around and he, he's got more than a little pressure and he just throws the ball up you can see there's really there's the boy but he's 10 yards further up the field a good good transition here by the defensive players to turn into offensive players to block down field for him as he scores on a 42 yard touchdown interception Judd Pulley plays some uh, backup tight end plays mostly in uh, the defensive backfield boy did he play it right there he is one excited young fella and now once again Orangeville will try for two they lead 36 29. They shift it to the single back. Boyer the quarterback. Again looking. This time it's intercepted by Fillion. And unlike the college situation, he can't score on it on the uh, extra point attempt. So again, they are turned back, and it is a seven point ball game. We'll see it again. Uh, let's take a look at the try for point here. Again, it's basically the same play they've used before. They throw back. He gets heavy pressure this time, and the ball is underthrown. Had he gotten a little more time, the receiver did have the defensive back beaten there. But a nice job there of, uh, of playing the ball. All right, let's be realistic. The situation for Lexington really is not fatal with that touchdown. It's still a seven point ball game. A field goal wasn't going to do him any good to try to, you know, they were only. Uh, they were up by a couple. Now they still have to score a touchdown. Then they can go for two or go for one in time. And of course, we'll have a uh, we'll have an overtime in high school ball. The difference here is going to be that they're going to be thrown into a heavy win. And of course, Brown is thrown for over 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns, but he hasn't gotten those stats thrown into this gale. That's right. Now Orangeville needs a good, good kickoff. Here. Well, they changed kickers. Ford is kicking off, and they didn't get a good one. They go down to the 20 yard line. Fumble! Oh, we've got a loose ball again. Lexington fumbles. Orangeville says they have it. No, say the officials. And the man in the white hat is the one that tells them, no, you don't. That's true. Now, see, again, this really, you know, it hurts Orangeville to give up such great field position here on that kickoff. Well, that's Friedmanski with the kickoff. He's cutting back here. He's they've got excellent field position. And let's just see where he loses the ball right here. Great camera work right there. A, a guy passing right by him pulls the ball right out of his arms. Couldn't tell who, but it's first down as we quickly come back live. Four minutes and counting. Shots in again with the shotgun from their own 40 yard line. Down in trouble. Shoots a little screen around to Thomas and Thomas. Gets close to midfield, about a yard and a half short of the first half. Well, I don't think Thomas is much of a threat going all the way uh, on that pass. He was just a safety valve there. He just dumped it out. We do have a flag here, and it's a face mask against Orangeville. Oh, this is just what the Broncos don't want to do. Tack on extra yards, and the clock stops. You know, the game has been relatively free of penalties. And now to have them happen in this kind of a situation. But the key to this was the poor kickoffs by Orangeville with the wind at their back. The ball has made a quick trip into Orangeville territory down to the 36 yard line. We have after the face mask penalty on the defense. First down. After the completion and the penalty. So they tack. Uh, 10 yards to the nine yard gain so it's first and 10 ball is on the 36 yard line clock starts to move again at 344. Again it's Thomas and Thomas gets good yardage across the 30 brought down by Chad Bauer. Might be able to see the uh, face mask called here on the replay Chad. Right here is 34 is Hort. You can see his hand right there as he swings around. It's not intentional, but in high school it doesn't matter. There's no five yarders either. It's a 10 yard penalty. Three minutes, nine seconds to go. Second down, gain of seven. Brown looking for Therian. Broken up in there by Rotoball. 
And, and you know, he's hung up. He, it, the ball hung up, and the receiver had the defender beat, but he got, he tried to lay it up in the corner, but once you get the ball up in the air with this wind, it's just hanging, and you can see right there, it all but stops up there. A nice tight spiral, but he just got the ball too high. Yeah, anytime you do anything in this kind of a wind against it, it's just, it's very, very difficult. We'll show you those flags in a minute. Third and three now, big play, inside handoff that goes, and this is Thomas. Thomas, don't believe, got the first down. It'll bring up a fourth and maybe one. What's the quarterback you can see, see how, right there. Yeah, there it is. That is one stiff win. Decision time. Decision time with a fourth and one. Lexington will take a timeout. The clock at 2.40. And wow, 36-29. So it's a seven-point lead. And looking ahead for Lexington, if they score, if they score, there's no need to try a two-point conversion. There is overtime. There is overtime, and that puts the ball on the 10-yard line. And of course, both teams have four downs in which to score. Nobody scores. They start again from the 10-yard line. Well, we haven't gotten there yet. Let's see. Well, when Notre Dame battles Miami, it's worth another look. Sunday morning at 9, Sports Channel presents a replay of the classic rivalry. The top-ranked Irish travel to Miami for a showdown that will help determine the next national champion. That's Sunday morning at 9, right here on Sports Channel. Our season never ends. And I don't think anybody wants this game to end, but it's only got another 2 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. In regulation, we might add, in regulation. Here we go. Fourth down. Lexington, fourth and one. They trail by seven. Ryan Benning, the coach of the Broncos of Orangeville, telling his team to dig in. Then they shift. Boys and Thomas in the eye. Brown, fourth and one. What a play. Brown taken down by Orangeville, and this could be a ball game. What a play in there. Mike Harnish coming in. He's made the big plays on offense and defense. Mike Hart is stopping Brown on a fourth and one. What a call. I was going to say that was a surprise call, I think, to everybody. Of course, had, had he made it, he was going for six. He wasn't going for the first down on that. Had he made it, they would have said, you know, coaching genius. But unfortunately, get a great pass rush here. He never gets the ball off. And Orangeville takes over on downs. And uh, the running game had been going good. He only needed a yard. It, it surprised me. I'll put it that way. Briggs, Zimmerman, Harnish. And Dean Briggs, all four of them combining the stop. And this is Horton now. Orangeville trying to run clock out here with the lead in the ball at 2.05. And I believe uh, Lexington has two times out left, so we'll see how many they take. The last thing he says every single time he's calling the play, and if you watch his lips, he's telling him to hang out of the ball. Hang on to the ball. This will be an upset. Lexington undefeated, 13-0. Orangeville, 11-2. Both teams, semifinalists last year, have given us all our money's worth for the finals this year. Second down now. This is Matt Rodeball. And Matt Rodeball's got a first down and may have a lot more. Saving, tackling there by Stover. And Rodeball has really effectively sewn up this ball game for Orangeville, but Stover saved the touchdown. That may be academic at this point with the ball in Lexington territory on the 37. Just a, a wing T trap play here. Go to ball cutting back against the green and then just cutting back. Great downfield block by Boyer on that defensive back. And right after this play, the coach is making all the gyrations, telling the, the uh, backs to keep two hands on the football. There's a shot at Coach Moore. Very dejected at this point. With a minute on the clock. Clock is running. A minute to go. Rotoball with a 100-yard day. And he has done it the hard way. We get a whistle right here before the play can get off, and we'll see what this is all about. Orangeville now looking to run out the clock. 108 yards on 17 rushes, and boy, they have been key ones because Hort did the bulk of the work at the beginning of the game. Even into the third quarter, but Rotoball got the tough yardage when it was needed and the spectacular yardage on the sweeps. He really did. He's their big breakaway threat. Hadn't scored 22 touchdowns coming into the ball game, but it's 
another situation where they were evenly matched. They both had over 200 carries in the season. They both had over 1,000 yards. And now again, they come out showing great balance with both backs getting over 100 yards. A delay of game call against Orangeville. So that stops the clock with 56 seconds to go. Brian Benning doesn't look too perturbed about that. Right now, they might just start taking a knee right here. And that's what he does. Moyer takes a knee. And he'll do it a couple of more times, and that'll be it. Lexington will take its time out. I believe that's uh, number two. They have one more. But you can see Ed Moore is uh, Got the headset off, and there's the object of it all. Those the trophies. Those trophies. Yeah. Both teams came so very close last year, and they both come back this year. 22 to wait at halftime. 29 to 16, and then look out. Orangeville coming back. Seven-yard run by Hort. Rotobaugh score. And then Pulley with the 41-yard interception, three straight touchdowns for Orangeville, and that turned this game completely around. There's Coach trying to tell the kids to make sure that they don't have any silly mistakes here and give the ball up. The stranger things have happened in high school football. Make sure you hang on to the ball. There's a very dejected Coach Moore. Boyer will go to his knees. And I do not believe Lexington can stop the clock any further. That's it, so we'll just tick this one off. Well, you take a look at Orangeville's road to the playoffs. Beat Duran 32 to 8. Then a 20 0 win over Freeport. Sterling Newman, tough game by three, a winner 25 22. And then a wallop in the Skiota. 50 to nothing, and that brought us to the finals. And that'll do it. Flags fly on the last play right here. Let's see what's going on here. I see, wait a second, we've got a fumble. We've got a fumble. The officials say that Lexington's got the ball. But I think there's an interference there on the snap. The defensive man might have nicked the ball because the quarterback never got the ball on the snap here. Let's see if we can see. It's a. We have a legal procedure on the right. That's they hit right. the ball on the snap. That's okay. exactly you called what it happened. I did not see it, but that's the only thing I could conceive of because when the quarterback came up, he never had the ball. So before he ever touched the ball, it would have been an offside because his hand crossed the neutral zone. Well, now it's time for after a quick catching of the breath for Brian Benning and company to celebrate. One more snap, and that'll do it. Well, they might. They won't have to snap the ball here because the clock's going to run. They're going to start the clock up, and there it is. Okay, that's the end of the game. What a game it was with the final score. Orangeville, 36. And Lexington, 29. Wow. What a finish. Two coaches congratulate each other. And there is a happy man. There's Ed Moore, who's not a happy man. Brian Benning. Oh, oh just what you need on a 30-degree day, huh? He doesn't mind. You can see it there, the Orangeville Broncos, the 1989 1A state champions. We'll be back in a minute. Thanks. Orangeville comes back, and uh, Moyer, I think, with that big pass play, was the key to the game. They got the momentum going the first time that they had the win, throws it deep, picks up a big first down, puts him down on about the 12-yard line, and from there it was all Orangeville. You can see Pat Egan of Lexington, Coach Ed Moore, Derek Weinzero. Some really outstanding efforts by all these young men. And uh, you know, it's hard to say there's nothing to feel bad about, but you can't tell those kids that. Well, especially when they uh, they win 13 games to get here and lose the last one. Well, we have a very happy and a very wet Brian Benning. Brian, can you hear us down there? Yeah, I certainly can, Mike. <laughs>
Hey, congratulations, Coach. By the way, how's your clothing? Uh, it's a little wet right now, but I could care less. I'm just tickled pink. Uh, you know, it's a great performance by our kids in the second half. They didn't quit. Uh, we couldn't be more proud of our young men. Boy, I can I can second that. Jack, go ahead. I got a question for you, Brian. What did you say at halftime? Was it an X and O talk about what you could do, or was it more of a psychological, we're back in the ball game, we can get there? Well, there's a lot. You know, some of it's X and O's. Uh, some of it I'm not going to tell you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we weren't real happy at halftime. We kind of let them know what we thought uh, of our performance uh, in the first half. Yo, we knew we were a better football team than what we had played in the first half. We just didn't play very well. Uh, we had played too soft defensively, and uh, we just felt that we should have played a lot better. And we, we knew that we didn't represent our area like we were, like we were capable of, and uh, the five people back home and our school. And, yo, we deserved a better performance than that, and, and in the second half, we really came through and we needed it. Brian, it's really interesting to watch your two backfield men, uh, Hork and, uh, and Rotoball. Rotoball spent a lot of time throwing as many good blocks as later he would get good runs. He certainly did. Yo, Matt's a great back, and he's as good as any in small schools in the state, I think. Uh, yo, we have, we've never seen a better back all season long, and he runs so hard. James Hort, we knew, would be a pivotal player today uh, for our football team. And, uh, we knew that with their defensive schemes, it was important that we get our fullback game going. We did that a good, we did that well. And our uh, halfback, Matt Rodeball, took advantage of that. Jim Moyer made some great throws. Uh, you guys saw what kind of army he's got. He threw, I don't know how far, 60 some yards yeah. in here. Uh, yeah, he's a great player. We didn't throw as much as we probably uh, would have, or could have, or maybe we should have, but. Uh, our ground game was going. It was just a matter of playing the clock, whether or not uh, how soon to start throw. Brian, last one, real quick. Okay. Uh, the block of the field goal by Harnish really was a good. Big, uh, you know, turned out to be uh, awfully big. All right, listen, we'll let you go because you got a trophy presentation. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks, Appreciate it. Brian Benning, coach of the winning Orangeville Broncos. We'll be back in a minute.